All right, Jay Williams, talk to me. Who's the team to be in the East? Is it Milwaukee or Boston? It's Milwaukee. There, there's no doubt. I, I think there's a – No doubt? There's No, no doubt. doubt. I think there's no a sizable doubt. difference yeah, no doubt. between Milwaukee and the Celtics. All right, all right. Stephen A., you know what I love about you? Not only are you a superstar, but you work in a very blue-collar manner. You show up early. You stay late. You do the podcast. You do all this stuff. You work have, all the time. I have to tell the he's truth. He's a little white-collar. Okay. I, I, I'm, yeah, he's, you, oh, you're he's right, white-collar? You're right white about everything. Well, she, forget her for a second. You don't, don't want to listen to her okay. with that nonsense. Okay. She, you are wrong about one thing. I don't always arrive early, early. than everybody. Now, I'll stay late. Yeah. But that early part is, a, is, is still a killer for me. But when you arrive, I'm is ready. it safe to say that you have arrived? Uh, uh, yeah. Correct? Yeah, no it's, all, it's all white collar. Oh, Stevie okay. A in the building. Confused. Stevie A in the building. So as yeah. much as I love yeah. for Zinga, yeah. as much as he's put on weight, didn't get hurt last season, mm -hmm. and he expands their offense, mm -hmm. I also felt like Jalen Brown looked a little lost last night. Like okay. he didn't know what to do. That could be worked over time. My biggest concern for the Celtics is when you lose Marcus Smart, Defensive Player of the Year, when you lose Robert Williams, mm -hmm. who protects the rim. Mm -hmm. When you lose Grant Williams, who was the only person, by the way, who stood up to Jimmy Butler and matched his energy last season in the playoffs. When you lose people like that and Malcolm Brogdon, regardless of injury, mm -hmm. still the poise and how he handled made big shots. I think you lose the heart and the soul of the team. Mm -hmm. And my one concern with this, I don't question their talent at all. I love Jason Tatum, mm -hmm. a Duke byproduct. I love him more than anything. Right. I wonder if their ability to lead mm -hmm. for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown mm -hmm. can ever match the skill level of the players that they are. Okay. Because as much as I like Drew Holiday, low energy. Not the kind of leader I feel like from demanding greatness from others each and every moment. Right. Same thing, Al Horford. He can try. He was the one leading the locker room last year. That's right. When they were having their issues in the first round against Philly, okay? Okay. He was the one with the voice. Okay. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, talented. Mm -hmm. I don't question the drive and the anger and the passion of Damian Lillard. I don't question the drive and the anger and passion of Giannis. I see their depth. I think Boston is top heavy, and I think it is Milwaukee's to lose. I love Boston. They have a legit shot. I just need to see more from their leadership and them not becoming small when moments yeah. become big. I could say the same thing to you about Milwaukee that you just said about Boston. How? So, I'm I, I just saying, I'm saying when you look at their roster, first of all, I think they're top heavy, my personal opinion. I mean, I mean, Grayson Allen is gone. You see some of the pieces that they have in place. Drew Holiday is a tremendous loss for them defensively. Certainly, Dame makes up for lots of it. We all know how mm. I feel about Damian Lillard. I, I literally prayed in front of an audience in Las Vegas before the Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford fight with Damian Lillard sitting right behind me. I prayed for him to change his mind and pick the Knicks, come to the Knicks, find a way to get to the Knicks, okay? So we know how I feel about Dame time. It's no doubt about that. But I would tell you this. When I think about Boston, your starting five matters. And when you take into account Marcus Smart, I mean, just the Energizer Bunny, the lifeblood of that franchise, you get it. Um, the flip side to it is that he ain't 7'3". You know, and when you're 7'3", and you can block shots the way Porzingis can block shots, I think that takes into consideration. I'm big on Robert Williams. I got it. Damn, he's always injured. We know the last two years he's been injured, so I got to take that into account. It was a struggle for him to play 50% of his games. Where's you know that. Was injured yeah, before yeah last I understand year. that, but, but, well, but, but we can go. Uh, but last year he played a vast majority of the games, averaged 23 points, which is a career high. He's shooting 37% from three point range. We got to give him credit in that regard. So I'm looking at Jalen Brown. You got some stuff to prove because you didn't show up in that game seven after Jason Tatum got hurt. First damn play of the game, he got hurt. First offensive play of the game for Boston, Jason Tatum got hurt. We know what JT brings to the table. We know this brother's a superstar. The only, nobody was happier for Jalen Brown than Jason Tatum when Jalen Brown got his $300 million because that means Jason Tatum go get $350 million. You understand that? I hope everybody understands that. Jason Tatum go get $350 million because he's worth it, and we know what he brings to the table. But when you take into account he's 6'9", Jalen Brown 6'7", Porzingis 7'3", Al Horford's a big, Derek White can play. I'm high on Pritchard, believe it or not. I like that that little kid got his money. I congratulated him last night when we were at the game. I understand what you're saying about Milwaukee with Giannis and Dame. Of course, we got to look at Brooke Lopez. We got to look at Bobby Portis. I get that. Mm -hmm. But the flip side to it is that I think they're very evenly matched. But when you take into account that Drew Holiday is there and it ups the ante on them defensively and how they can guard at multiple positions because of their size, 
all things being equal, meaning nobody getting hurt, everybody staying healthy. Mm -hmm. I look at Boston as having a slight edge. I think it's a nail biter. I think it comes down to them. It's a two horse race. I can see I us in the Eastern Conference Finals yeah. in a game seven. One body, somebody's 48 minutes away from going to the finals, another's 48 minutes away from going home. I can see it coming down to that, but I give Boston the slight edge because of JT with Jalen Brown and the addition of Porzingis as a shot blocker and a three-point shooter because those are the two things that he can do. I think that gives them an edge. By the way, they make free throws as well. Dame, of course, is going to do his thing, but defensively, we got to wonder about that. And then Giannis, is he going to hit those free throws? Is he going to be able to answer the call in the clutch, particularly from the perimeter and the free throw line? That's my big thing, Jay. Which version of Randall do you expect to see this season? Mm. Mm. <sighs> it's a hard question right here. It's a very hard question. You know, we interviewed him last night during an NBA count. Yeah, I watched. love JR, man. And, I, and listen, listen, I got a lot of respect for Julius Randall because he come to work. If it wasn't for those last five, he got, you know, which was Zanko, he would have played every game last season. He played the first 77 games of the season, of the regular season last year. The brother's a blue horse worker. He's come to work. He promised me last night he's going to take it to the hole a bit more instead of launching them damn threes all the damn time. Having said all of that, I'm just looking at some of his numbers here, particularly from last night, Jay. Became just the fourth player in NBA history to shoot worse than 25% from the field, minimum of 20 field goal attempts, by the way, and worse than 25% from the free throw line with a minimum of five free throws. I mean, damn. I mean, after having that conversation, and then that happened, that really, really bothers me. But I know that Boston is a superior team. The Knicks were competitive. They were in the game. They fought. They came back. They took a lead in the fourth quarter. Last three minutes or so, Boston showed who they are compared to the New York Knicks, mm -hmm. and that is what it is. In terms of Julius Randle, I think that we're going to see him try to attack the basket more. I think he knows he needs to do that. Because even though the three-point shot works effective for him, like he pointed out last night when he first came into the league, Jay, he was playing bully ball. That's what he did. He was a bulldozer, and he'd roll right through you and what have you, and he needed to develop his jump shot. He did that. We can really appreciate that. But the problem is now he, became, he got to rely upon it, made him think he was the number one option. Tom Thibodeau didn't reel him in. And so, as a result, you go into the playoffs against Atlanta a few years ago. Obviously, last year against Miami and Cleveland to a lesser degree, even though he was hurt in that series, got hurt mm -hmm. early on. The bottom line is, is that they figured out letting Julius Randle shoot those threes settling. and exactly. settling works for us. I mm -hmm. think he's figured that out. And now he'll be in attack mode a bit more. Last night wasn't the prime example for it, no doubt. But I think as the season progresses and he gets himself in shape, because you know he had off-season surgery, and he didn't look like as buffed, as buffed as he normally does. He looks like he needs to, you know, get himself in a little bit more shape. He wasn't able to work out as much this summer as he would like. I'm just thinking, yo, he's going to get to the basket more, he's going to attack more, and he's going to be more efficient. He still don't need to be the number one option, though. That needs to be Jalen Brunson. Agreed. I think he's going to have a terrific season. Mm. Yeah. With Julius Randle, what happened last year – is when things are going bad, he becomes a zero. A zero when things are going bad. When things are going well, he's a superstar. So what's that in between? Yeah. I am going to say definitively, I think the Knicks are the third best team in the Eastern Conference. So do I. Third best so team in the Eastern Conference. So do I. I look at Philly, as much as I think they're going to blossom with Tyrese Maxey having the ball in his hands, I think it's going to be difficult for James Harden to compartmentalize his relationship with Daryl Morey and his relationship with players think, in the I court think, I, think, I think they got to get rid of Jay, uh, James I, I think Harden. they're going to have to as I, well. I, I, I think that James Harden has to be gone within the next two weeks. Just Sooner. I, mean, I think it's going to be a detriment to their team yeah, That's what I'm overall. saying. I, I, I totally agree with you. All right, so we, we both agree on So you're on, going on that. Celtics, Bucks, Knicks. Knicks, yes. Because yes. I also think they're better than you Cleveland. You are too. Knicks, Knicks better than East. Wow. I think they're better than Cleveland. Okay. I, I mean, they beat they Cleveland play. last year in the playoffs. They play Cleveland in back-to-back. -back. I think their third and fourth game, so coming up pretty yes. soon. Okay. Well, yeah. I still think Cleveland has a smaller back. They'll, they'll, they'll split, split it. I think that's a good matchup, though. I think they're better than Cleveland. I think Orlando could be a sleeper. Sleeper. But, like, I just – I mean, I don't – in Miami, whenever you lose your backcourt, when you lose yeah, Gabe Vincent and Max Struess, both of them. Like, it's, like, as much as people are trying Miami, to sell me on Tyler Harrell. We haven't that. Miami has not had yeah. a good offseason. No, You didn't get all. Dame, and you lost your starting backcourt. Like, they, they may yeah, struggle to make the playoffs. we saw Emo Jimmy. He's aware. They were going to struggle to make the playoffs. Yeah. As much as I love Jimmy, and I know he's always underrated. So, I'm looking at Easter Conference saying it's wide open. Yeah. No, I think the Knicks yeah. are the third best team. Cool. Interesting. Cool. I say, what would you say is your biggest takeaway from seeing Wenby? <laughs> The brother is very, very skilled. 
um, to be 7-4, to be able to handle the ball like that. And, and one of the things that I look at, particularly in today's NBA game, I pay attention to your ability to shoot, that stroke. Do you have that, particularly when you're as frail thin as he is? Because you're not doing but so much inside. Because they're not going to let you. They're just going to chop you down. They're going to look at your legs. They're going to look at your arms. They're going to look at it. They're just going to chop you down. That's just the way that it's going to be. And so for me, to watch him last night, to pull up from three, to watch him, the fluidity with which he positioned himself for his shots, not just the shot-making ability, but how he was able to get to most of the places he wanted to in order to get his shot up and to do what he does. Not to say that it's difficult for a seven-foot-four guy to do. I give him a lot of credit. Obviously, this brother's going to be an elite defender because his instincts and his ability to block shots with those long arms, that comes into play as well. All I'm concerned about with him is his physique and the punishment he's going to endure. Because when you see somebody that skilled and he's seven feet four, Jay, I interviewed him the night of the draft. I saw it. I came up to his belly. Yeah. It was just embarrassing. I, 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 I literally felt like a toddler. I mean, I was like, damn. I was looking at this unbelievable. I could barely reach the, his damn dr It was ridiculous, okay? He's that tall. He's that long. If I'm going up against him and I see those skills, but then I see how thin he is, I got to chop him down. You saw how he tried to post. They pushed him right out of there. Get the hell up out of here. You don't belong in here. These are, this is big boy territory. And those brothers with beef were just pushing him out. And that's what you have to pay attention to when it comes to him. He's too thin, and I just hope that he's able to stay healthy. The skills are there. And yeah. he's not scared. And to show up in the fourth quarter, despite being in foul trouble, to make sure you drop nine points during that period, shows you he's a brother that wants the ball in his hands. The moment doesn't scare him. That's a big deal. I, I like he, him a lot. I hope he does get punished physically. I really do. Mm. Because I, I think for Victor, he's been so gifted that his gifts overwhelm people. Okay. And they become amazed at it. And I think if he gets punished physically at the age of 19 years old, I think he will naturally put on weight. Because I think he has a chance to be one of the greatest NBA players in the history of the game. I mean, he's seven foot tall with an eight foot wingspan. The guy can touch the rim standing on the That's ground. Right. Which is why I get annoyed when people rave about him dunking. Anything but that. He's 7'4". He doesn't have to jump to dunk. Leave him, it's not a big deal that he dunks. But, uh, you know, but everything else is a Pop big deal. talked about his maturity, yeah. and I still think there's room for improvement with that. We talk about physicality. Grant Williams kept trying to get up underneath him last night and push him off the block. What he'll learn over time is I don't need to be physically stronger than Grant Williams to get to where I want to be on the court. If my right elbow is on you, I can roll off the right elbow, force you to take a couple steps down. I can walk you down. I can get you to places just by maneuvering my body with different angles, right? But I think the durability, that's the only question I have for him. I don't question the drive. I don't question the skill set. I don't question the physicality. That will happen in time. The durability, though, I just pray he doesn't get hurt because guys who are typically that tall and that long mm -hmm. are prone to a knee falling on you or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if that doesn't happen, Stephen A., he's going to be he's once in a generation talent. He's, no question, once in a generation. I want to give some love to somebody else from Duke. How about Derek Lively? You look good. How about Derek Lively? Look good. Thing? For, for the Mavs. For the Mavs. Uh, rookie, first rookie in over 40 years with 15 or more points on 80% shooting to go with double-digit rebounds in the season opener. Mm. Let's okay. give him. Let's give him some love. And Luka Doncic's fifth triple double, double. against the Spurs, most right. against any opponent. They still can't stop a cold though. Give up 68 points in the first half. 